If you're wondering why there's so much anti-protein propaganda out there, well, here's uh, maybe an explanation. Protein is not very profitable. It's expensive to produce. In fact, food manufacturers love carbs and fats. They can often make lots of processed foods with those things. They're hyper palatable. They make you eat more. That's right. Protein is satiety producing. In other words, food manufacturers know protein makes them less money. So maybe there is a motivation as to why they seem to be demonizing this essential macronutrient. Do you know to that point, this is also why uh, like certain protein powders and foods uh, that are higher in protein tend to be more expensive. It used to be like one of the things I used to get so frustrated trying to explain to somebody who would be like, that's so expensive yeah. for protein powder. That's ridiculous. It's like you can't compare a 15 gram of protein that you can get at CVS to a 50 gram whey protein that you get and be like, oh, it's half the price. Yeah, it's less than half the protein. Yep. That's what you're paying for. Yeah. I mean, that is the most expensive part of the protein powder is the actual whey protein that's in there yeah. or whatever Pro source you're using. Pro protein is just, if you were to look at the three macronutrients, right, proteins, fats, and carbs, it's the least palatable by far. Go to any grocery store and get a legit high protein food, processed food even, it's not going to be as tasty or engaging or addicting as foods that are high in carbohydrates, fats, and of course, they'll throw salt in there, right? So it's just not as enticing. Number two, the margins aren't very good. Mm -hmm. um, uh, lots of pro Obviously, most of the proteins come from animal sources. Now, there are plant sources as well, but the majority come from animal sources. They're not patented. Till to date, we don't have GMO cows that are patented that we can, you know— crush the margins on. So it's low margin. It makes you eat less. Like it makes no sense for them to invest in this. In fact, it makes a lot of sense to move people away from protein. And by the way, for people who are like, why would they do that? That's not, that's too conspiratorial or whatever. Right now, food manufacturers are literally meeting to discuss the rise of peptides that make people eat less, like semaglutide. <laughs> they literally are meeting, and they're yeah. like, we got to figure this out because right. people are going to eat less, less food. We're losing people. Yeah, you're talking about billions and billions of dollars, and you know, carbohydrates, high margins, fats, very high. Now, not all fats, but a lot of fats are, right? Because you could produce uh, you know, oils and have just incredible margins on those. And again, when you look at like classic palatability, of course, processed foods includes lots of chemicals, and they hijack this and really just turbocharge these Frankenstein foods. But the classic formula for palatability, every chef will tell you, is salt, sugar, and mm -hmm. fat, right? So salt, carbohydrates, and fats. Protein is not on there. Add protein to anything, and you reduce its palatability. You increase uh, the satiability, meaning you'll eat less of it. Um, and, of course, there's – now we can go even further and say – fit healthy people and they don't like that, you know, type of deal. But I don't even think it goes that far. I think they're just like, look at our profits. People eat less of it. Let's, yeah. let's not, let's not glorify well, protein or let's downplay it a little bit. So people eat more of this other stuff. In order to make profits, they got to reduce substantially the quality and like where they're sourcing and getting the protein from. I was like reminded of this when I was in Palm Desert, the, my, my kids and we were in like sports basement, I believe. And, uh, you know, they have all the, regular stuff and then they have like protein uh that's there and i'm like well i wonder what kind of protein like they're they're gonna have in a place like this and of course it's like a company that i thought didn't exist anymore like it's basically shreds that convert over to like risin or whatever oh right and so you see all these like flashy colors and you see like jolly rancher flavors and ghost and like <laughs> you know the prime and all these things like all the, the stuff that the kids are like really um attracted to and like um trying to d describe to them why you're probably not even going to get very much protein out of this if anything and you're just gonna get a bunch of carbs and sugar and like fillers and all this other crap and so it's not even worth your time because they're really interested in right now in in consuming protein and building muscle and all that and like this is like what is still out there is like just like a total shit show yeah totally yeah, that's crazy yeah it's it's um you know when it comes to when it comes to protein, we know what it does for the body. Well, here's here's a, the the angle that I I like to go with, right? So, when you look at palatability and sati in, in satiety, right? Satiety refers to the feeling of being full. I don't want any more. Palatability is how enjoyable something is to eat, and both of those are 
we, we evolved to develop satiety reading, I don't know, signals or systems in the body. We evolved to develop palatability to kind of drive us in our behaviors. This is, this is the main theory as to why some foods produce more satiety, why some things are more palatable. So for most of human history, obviously we didn't have heavily processed foods. And for most of human history, we didn't even farm. We didn't have agriculture. We were hunter gatherers. So why would protein, uh, number one, be the most satiety producing, second being fat, but why protein, right? Because if you ate a lot of protein in nature, you probably consumed a lot of nutrients. So mm -hmm. your body didn't need to keep the hunger signal on, right? If you're eating lots of carbs, carbohydrates in nature, you're getting some nutrients, but not a lot. So your body cranks up hunger and keeps it there to keep you searching for more food. Natural protein containing foods tend to be very high in nutrients. And those tend to be, Satisfies again- Satisfies your need for nutrients. I, I mean, again, this is not ideal, but if you had to eat just one food and be okay, not ideal, but just be okay, not die, it would be animal meat. Mm -hmm. It would be literally just buffalo or cow or, you know, you know, gazelle or deer. Most bioavailable food source we got. Or really. just fish, yeah. right? So this is why that exists in the body. And protein, people, people know this. Um, one of the tricks that we all learned as trainers, it took me a long time to learn this. If I wanted to get my clients to eat less, all I had to do was get them to do two things. Avoid hev heavily processed foods, hit the protein targets. It was so effective, in fact, so effective that the vast majority of my clients, when they would actually do this, would come back to me and they would, almost all of them, like clockwork, would say the same thing. I can't eat this much. They would literally come to me and be like, I know you're telling me to eat 130 grams of protein. Uh, I'm trying to lose weight. This, I just can't eat that much. I feel like I'm stuffing myself. I'm going to gain weight. I'm like, no, you're not. You're actually eating less calories. And sure enough, they would all lose weight. That's how, that's how powerful it is on the appetite. If you've never tried to eat your body weight in protein, in grams of protein, or target body weight if you're overweight, try it. Do it consistently. See if you can do it for more than two weeks. And I guarantee what you'll find when you prioritize is you just can't eat as much. Just period. End of story. It just kills your appetite. Mm -hmm. Food companies don't want people to eat less. Why would, they, why would any market want you to consume less of their product? That doesn't make it. That's, that's counter business. Like that doesn't make any sense. They're gonna make less money. They want you to consume more. They also like margins. Look at the margins. Like, uh, by the way, this is true for all whole natural foods. All whole natural foods have a tiny margin compared to processed foods. Cause I can, I can grow a bunch of things, sell those things, tiny margins, or I can put them all together, make, you know, you know, you know, Justin's Fruitios or something like that. Right. <laughs> those are delicious. They're delicious. <laughs> and I can slam the more, I can, I can raise the margins and I can patent it. It's my product. Nobody can copy me. And there's, there's the money. So the incentives, I think it's more clear. I think there's a better way to say it. The incentives are not to, to promote the consumption of protein, even though all the data, all the data shows a diet that's high in protein is better for muscle. It's better for fat loss. And, uh, and as a result, better for your health. You know, speaking of margins, are, are any of you familiar? Maybe Doug, this is a question for Doug to look up because I'm not familiar with the difference in the margins for all the different types of proteins. So like if we were to compare a whey to beef to a pea protein to like, because when you think of it, when you see protein on, on the market, it is, you know, if it's got third party testing in it, it's relatively similar in price, right? Give or take. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty competitive. So I'm curious to which is the cheapest to process. There's got to be one that's easier than the others. I right? would assume whey has got to be have the smallest margins because it's the most. There's the greatest supply. Most protein powders. It's the majority, right? Or whey? Yeah. It used to be. By the way, I don't know if you guys remember this. Do you remember when the first whey protein powders were sold? It used to be thrown away, wasn't it? Well, whey was thrown away from like uh, from dairies because they they would it wasn't as desirable. But then. Whey protein became popular. It was Designer Whey was one of the first companies. I remember this. And, and this is back in, I want to say mid-90s, so 95. I was like EAS days. Though. Yes. Like when I started getting into it. Oh, okay. So yeah. a little later. Yeah. So I, it might have been 95. Maybe Doug can look it is, up. It's Well, for sure it was 96, 97, 98 because I worked in the factory that mixed it. That's right. That's right. So that was hmm. in high school. Maybe Doug, you could look up Designer Whey when Designer Whey was founded. But I remember it was like one of the first, it was like the first kind of 
like big protein, like whey protein powder to hit the market. Before that, it was like egg protein or just like milk isolate. Um, and then you had some soy. That was the big way, right? And then they made, you know, ways the best, mm-hmm. digest the fastest, et cetera, et cetera. 1988. Okay, so 1988. So I, I remember mid-90s starting to get popular and um, it was expensive. A can, uh, I don't know how big of a canister this is, but it's, it's like, like- 50 bucks. It's like, it was like the tube can. So it wasn't even a big jug with like 40 servings. It was like 20 servings of 20 grams of protein per serving. Yeah. And it was in the mid-90s. It's like 50 bucks. Yeah, it was close to 50 yeah, bucks. I remember, I remember. In the mid-90s. You could buy wow. a bag of whey- for like 50 bucks now. Yeah. So they have to, the margins have to be tiny now, right? And then the question would be, how does that compare to like pea and beef and all the other ones? I think beef would be one of the more expensive ones, I would think. Probably. I would think so. I, would think I, pea I looked would it be, up, but I couldn't find anything Oh, you couldn't find it? No. I would think that the vegetable, one, like from pea, peas and so that would be way cheaper, no? Well, back in the day, um, when my dad would buy protein powders, uh, milk isolate or milk protein was the cheapest. And then the expensive one was egg. I remember that. Egg was always a little bit more expensive. They used to sell those back in the day. Yeah, a lot of companies will actually break even or take a loss on the way. To bring they, you in. Yeah, to bring you in and get you to, because it, it's so competitive. There's so many different companies that provide all the different protein powders that they'll take a hit or break, very similar to the Costco strategy with yeah. chicken, right? Is yeah. like, we'll take a loss on the chicken to get everybody in here buying that because we know that they're not going to come all the way to Costco and just buy a, you know, a chicken and then and leave. They're going to buy a bunch of other stuff. So I think the same concept with supplement companies. Too. Movie theaters do that, right? With movie tickets. They don't have huge margins on movie tickets. Oh, yeah. They make it on the concessions. Yeah, yeah that's, for sure. That's why a bag of popcorn is so expensive. Dude. Had to, speaking, by the way, speaking of protein powders, um, I, I've i identified this with myself. I want to communicate this to you guys because you guys are both working with your, with your gut health. Uh-huh. So I identified this for myself and I looked it up and it's confirmed in some studies. Artificial sweeteners for people with gut issues, they tend to trigger uh, symptoms. Mm-hmm. So I went off all artificial sweeteners last week and uh, I had significant improvements. The past couple of days I reintroduced them. Sure enough, I'm having issues. So it's not food intolerant stuff. It's literally sucralose, aspartame or other artificial sweeteners. Interesting. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm ready to cut. Yeah. Cut it off anyway, too. Even with some energy drinks that have them in there. It's yes. like, dude, it adds up. Like I, I'm sure that's going to a contributor. Uh, it, I'm it, pretty it, sure. It is for me. Cause I went on and off and then I looked it up. What did, what were some of your biggest offenders? Cause you're pretty good about that type of stuff. What did, what, did, what were your offenders? So if I get, cause um, I know Justin and I, we're guilty of the energy. Yeah. Drinks. So energy the, drinks, <laughs> like sometimes number one, those are addicting. Uh, and they're, you know, obviously they taste good and they're fun. So energy drinks. And then, uh, the occasional, if I'm out and about protein bar or something like that. Cause they'll try and make protein bars, low carb. Yeah. But that's all what, I mean, you're not consistently doing any of that stuff. No, the energy drinks is the most consistent, but even just one or two, I noticed would kind of bother me. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I thought, was it just hmm. this process? Hmm. Uh, so I'm just sticking to my paleo Valley protein. Cause that's no artificial sweeteners and it's collagen protein, which is good for your gut and no, I'm just going to go caffeine pills. All right, today's giveaway is the MAPS Super Bundle. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, these are the final hours of Cyber Monday sale. 60% off all MAPS programs, all bundles across the board. If you're watching this podcast, when it drops, lucky you, Cyber Monday is still going on. So if you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Yeah, I go drink. kind of do much as I like them. Yeah, weird phases where I'm like uh, switching the caffeine source, and so like it's been heavy on the energy drink side. I'm gonna I've been going back to like nitro and you know just pure black coffee uh, just to get back kind of in that mode. Were you but okay that, with beans on your on your intolerance test? Not um, well. Uh, there was like two okay. <laughs> different kinds of beans I was okay with. The rest of them were like not on the list. And then all of the nuts were like pretty much, okay. you know, some off people limits. Because co- coffee is beans. Some people have bean intolerances. Oh, so coffee, no, I know. <laughs> just, let's just take all the love away from my life. <laughs> if cheese and coffee are the I'm, two I'm things, over it, bro. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm At so that point, I just it. deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just yeah. Deal, deal with the crazy <laughs> shits. You just, know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just get in there and just like staple this stuff together. Just F it, dude. Just I just, this is just who I am. Yeah, accept me. Just accept yeah. How come there's not a, like, there should be a movement. Like, you know how there's a movement for every damn thing now? There should be a movement like, 
bad gut health. Like, accept me. This is who I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah we should have marches just deny that I'm gonna in, in a flag. Yeah. 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 I think most people are just still unaware, you know? I mean, I think I think most people are just oblivious to having oh, any of their issues like that. There is. I, I, I agree with you. I, so many, when you talk to people, yeah. so many people have gut issues. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just, like, just don't even know. You like, know? So yeah. walk around bloated and shit all the time. Yeah. Hey, how was uh, Thanksgiving for you guys? Oh. Boy, well, you go first. What did everyone do? Oh, judge of well. Yeah. <laughs> I was in. Let's yeah, hear this one. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, there's just always like family stuff that's, uh, it, it, it causes like uh, chaos a bit. And then we kind of ride it out, have fun and make the, the most of it. But like, uh, one, so when we went, um, after Thanksgiving, we always cut the Christmas tree. And so this is like kind of, you know, the most chaotic day we've had, uh, uh, as we've all been gone and doing our vacations, but we went to go just, I thought, Hey, I'm going to bring the dogs. Cause I haven't got them out of the house a lot. And they've been kind of sitting in there all like depressed. So I'll take them with me. And so, um, we kind of went to our usual spot and actually ran into somebody that, uh, like listens to the show there and it was cool. Uh, out cutting the tree, out cutting the tree it was totally random, random yeah. you know. And I was like, "Oh, cool!" Yeah. And uh, we started kind of walking in a different path we we haven't done before. And my wiener dog is like really low to the ground and just kind of like you know explores everywhere, goes through all the stuff in the holes. Apparently, um, Courtney like. She all of a sudden like had this like reaction was like, ow, ow, something's biting me. And and like something, it really hurts. And I, I need you to look at it. And I'm like, oh God, what, what's going on? Like, what is it? Like, what do you think it is? Like, I don't know. It could be like a spider. It could be like a bee. It could be like an ant. Could be, I don't know what kind of insect. Something just bit me. And like, you need to take a look at this. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll take a look at it. And, oh, but we have to go over here. Cause like everybody around there's like kind of walking through and like trying to pick a tree and stuff. And so it's hard to like find privacy. And so was it was in a you? very precarious spot. Was she trying to flirt with you? I, I was hoping. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look at this real quick. Was not the case. <laughs> uh, okay. So it definitely looked like it because she had to take her pants like all the way off. Oh, and to where so it for was a like, second, you're yeah, it was like on like, you know, anyways, I won't, I won't, I won't reveal everything, <laughs> yeah. but it was very, <laughs> keep going. It was very, you know, in, in, in a sensitive spot. <laughs> and so it's just like, you need to look at this and make sure there's no like two like prong marks. Like, you know, it's not like a black widow yeah. or like a brown recluse or something crazy. And I look and there's definitely like a sting mark and it's, it's, um, puffing up and everything. And I'm like, what? Oh no, you got, you got stung by something. I don't know what, what you know? Cause there's no, sometimes you'll be able to see like the insect or whatever will kind of like yeah. fall out. And yeah. So I'm like, Oh shit, we need to, take your pants off and say, can't take my pants off here, you know? And so we're like, okay, well, let's go back to the truck. And so we go back to the truck and I take your pants off. And so we're in there and there's people like, you know, with Coco and their kids and they're (laughs) they're all like walking around us and like, I'm like hiding and she's like, she's like this, you know, (laughs) in the truck. And I'm like examining, (laughs) taking pictures. (laughs) And I'm like trying to reference it, dude. Cause I don't know what insect this is. You know, I'm like, I I, I was worried. Like I'm normally you would sit at the Sal and ask Sal, but (laughs) (laughs) not today, dude. I reply that looks familiar. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh man so i so i'm like looking at this and like nothing is really resonating and then like we went with the cousins and, and the rest of the family and everything and so they all of a sudden come kind of rushing back and with the dogs and everything and one of the, one of the kids got like like stung by a yellow jacket and so turns out there's there was a nest over there oh. and, and, and and so, and we know that uh, they all got pissed off because dog was Finn, scared. like, yeah. like got them all crazy because I think he 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 shoved his face in one of them because <laughs> now you see Finn, his face is just oh, blew he got up. He got stung like all over his face. He's got like, and then he started to go in hives, and he's got like bumps all over his body. And so, <laughs> this is before we even cut our tree, you know. And and so like how all, the hell did a yeah, I, get how did it, yeah how did a bee get her vagina bro like through like it wasn't their vagina it was oh okay closer you were, vagina oh okay yeah. you, so her inner thigh <laughs> sorry Courtney <laughs> yeah sorry, <'cause>, <laughs> well, you you were probably would have been it was, it was to say her, that I was like you were hinting but it, around, was, like, it was it was like the butt you think butt it'd be like here yeah it was like here <laughs> how oh did wow. it get there. 
I don't know. Like, we have no idea. Like, and, and if, if it was like through the pants, wow, can they do that? Like, I don't know. Jeans? Was she wearing jeans? She was, but they're kind of like stretchy. So I don't huh. know if that like made a difference. Wow. But it, it was, it, I had no idea like how this happened or whatever. It just Damn flew there and like, bugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just in, penetrated, infiltrated. Yeah. Uh, oh, it could have gone through the pants if they were tight. I think so. Okay. I think that's probably what happened. But, okay. but, Either way, like my niece, she she got bit too, and so they were kind of like tending to their wounds, and we're like, well, we're here, we got to make the most of it, so we got to go cut the tree. So I went with the kids and everybody to go, you know, cut our tree down, do our thing, and then like have cocoa in them. I'm we finish it up, and I'm kind of driving out to uh, pay for it, and uh, they have tamales and all this stuff there, and so I'm I'm actually I'm gonna take the dogs home. You guys go to uh, my in-laws and then they were going to have like lunch and all that and so i i basically have the dogs by myself in my truck and, I, and i'm getting out to pay this lady and she's like oh your dog's cute whatever and then finn jumps up and his face is just she's like oh my god what happened to your dog and i'm like he got stung by you know these yellow jackets she's like, oh i got benadryl she goes and gets benadryl for him and thankfully but then like finn just loses it pukes everywhere in the back seat oh my god arlo stomps all in it stomps all over my freaking truck like everywhere <laughs> dude my truck is a vomit comet at this oh. point and i get out and it's like no <laughs> and like and so they're all in their uh car right behind me court i'm like waving them in like help you know like the, the, this craziness happening and they get up to like help but they just bought uh, tamales with uh, these like salsa, these can cans of salsa that are like the lids aren't on very well. And so it gets up, spills all oh their salsa all God, over their car. Bro. So they're trying to clean their car. <laughs> I'm trying to clean. What this. a shit show, dude! dude. It, wow, this is a lamp. This is a national lampoon's like. It yeah. was just like that, and it didn't stop. Like I, so I went home and I like I took him back there and I and I wash Finn and I'm like trying to make sure he's okay and like you know, like hope, hope the right dose of like Benadryl wasn't like a thing. And I'm like, I don't know if I should leave him. Maybe I should bring him with me. And she's like, okay, <laughs> it'll be all right. And so he's just kind of sleepy and chilling. And I drive back over the hill and I get there and, you know, this is like an hour and a half later at that point where I'm like, I come back and then I'm hanging out with them again. I figure they, they, they ate, right? Like it's lunch. It was lunch a long time ago. I didn't have anything to eat all day. Like I just had coffee. And I was like looking forward to this big lunch. And so I get there and like, they're all, you know, kind of sitting around like, oh, hey, you made it. Like all trying to like excited that I'm there. And I'm like, hey, you know, like uh, a lot of attention. And I'm walking in and there's like jalapeno poppers and all this stuff and like uh, soup and all this. And like, eat, here, eat, eat, eat. And like they're, they're handing me all this stuff. Apparently that was just like the appetizers. And so I'm just like, oh, oh, great. I start like scooping all like the the chili in there and all the, the put all the stuff in there. And they'll look at me like, oh, we haven't eaten yet. And I'm just like, oh, oh, cool. Well, why'd you tell me to eat this? And like, 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 like it, and it was just reasonable. Like I, I didn't put it together that like they were just eating hors d'oeuvres and like appetizers and whatnot. And I just went for right for the main course. And so now, now I'm the asshole that like did everything. On top of everything. Yeah. In front. And so and it was just a small thing. But at that point I was like this, where I, I literally like almost lost it like in front of everybody. And then my sister, I was like, here, here's an Irish coffee. I'm like, thank you. And I go outside, just had like a moment to myself, just like drinking Irish coffee. Oh my and God. And trying to chill out and like, oh my God dude and it just kept going there was there's like a lot of other chaotic events that happened after that but it was Damn, like dude that was just like that was just the one day after what thanksgiving a nightmare yeah wow so that's a commercial for irish coffee yeah do you guys remember um zbiotics do you guys yeah do you guys remember <laughs> that that uh commercial on tv when we were kids it was like a like a bubble bath for moms, Calgon. Do you guys remember that? No. Yeah, where the mom would be like, ah, my kids are driving me crazy. And then it's like, Calgon, take me away. And then she's in the bath with the bubbles. And she's like, ah, oh, she's like relaxing. Like, I don't this is my one moment all. of peace. You guys don't remember that? No, I don't remember that one <laughs> Oh, at all. yeah, dude. No. I remember that. Because yeah. it, it would always show the mom like losing her shit. And then a bubble bath fixes everything. Now, in a situation like that, is uh, is is Courtney bad like you too, where she's getting all stressed out too, or is she like calm and so? Are you both? Were you both like ah? Yeah. Well, you know, thankfully she recognized like kind of the level I was at and was like 
like very conscious of when I get to that point, like she's like, Oh, oh. Like, it was kind yeah. of like, you know, rubbing my shoulders and like trying to like kind of, uh, make things a bit easier for me, like, uh, from then on out. But yeah, no, it, cause otherwise if we're both like that, yeah, it's, it's a bad day. Wow. <laughs> what, you know what? That's like, um, it's one of those things that sucks. Oh, there's the commercial right there in 1978. Wow. Look at that. Jeez. 1978. Commercial? I mean, they would repeat them, you know, but it's like, they were just, Damn, you are aging yourself on this one. I, yeah, yeah. I don't think I ever saw these. Yeah. She's like losing her shit. And then apparently a bubble bath, uh, fixes everything <laughs> with, uh, yeah, see, oh, wow. yeah, I don't that. know what they put That's in that bubble eighties thing. Yeah. That bubble bath, but uh, bubble bath. Yeah. I think like, she's relaxed. You need to bring them back. I think she's relaxed. Cause still look at that guy, bubble guy, bath. Jesus like Christ. Five, five bubble baths. She's living you like still a, do that, right? Adam? Yeah, That's I took your, five of them this last week, bro. Bubble bath. Yeah, dude. Why do you have bubbles in your pad? I have a son, dude. I have a son. Oh, with him. Yeah. I'm fuck. I'll take it by myself too. Why? Cause I like it. But what is it? You do a bubble bath. It has lavender and the salt and all that stuff like in it so it like it's not just bubbles Would i don't do, do i don't do like mr bubble I don't do <laughs> <laughs> it's like a spa like hey, bubble what are, they, what are the gangster versions like dish soap yeah yeah hey, bro i grew up on that i no. know bro so, i know that's the cheap bubble bath bro you know Put it's so Paul funny Ball you say hey, you know it's so funny you say that okay so wow. i totally grew up on that right and I remember when we it were does. kids, my sister and it I. cleans the hell out of you, though. Let's see here. I got to be fourth grade right here. So my sister and I, we, we clean yeah, my, greasy uh, hair. my mom's car. The car that I told you guys, the shit brown one that I drove for her. Yeah. One of the other things I've never described about it is that for the rest of, from, from when I was fourth grade, remember, I drove this car yeah. when I was in high school, yeah. okay? From fourth grade on, anytime it rained, the entire car would bubble. And because my sister and I sat on the top of the roof and did, emptied like a whole dish soap thing, and like the shit got in all the crevices in the paint or so whatever. So when it rains, you just so, have, you'd have the bubble mobile. So, so, the, so whenever it would rain, the hood. I'm talking like years later. I'm not fucking exaggerating that. That I don't know what is in that that Dawn dish soap or whatever, <laughs> but it seeped into that car because we just. I remember. I never forget her oh, sitting yeah. on the top of the hood. Or, and hers just sitting there and I'm spraying <laughs> and we like emptied like the whole thing on there and forever that car if it would rain like so, bubbles it's and suds would come sudsy. out <laughs> That's a, you know, Don, uh, Don was, uh, saved a lot of, uh, I mean, this is a commercial. I don't know if this is true. This is the one for the oil spill. Yeah. When yeah, they had the Exxon the oil spill and then they, they you know, Don Valdez. Yeah. Whatever. They did the commercial with Don where they're like the ducks. We cleaned the ducks with Dawn and they're cool now. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that was a good, it was a good PR though. move for them. Very, very good sure. PR. I don't remember that. So Thanksgiving for us was we had like okay, 50 people, right? Maybe more. So my, wow. I don't, it might be 60. My grandmother's house, nobody's in there anymore, right? My grandfather passed away. My grandmother, she needs kind of full time care. So she goes between my mom and my aunt's house. Okay. So their house just sits there. And um, my aunts and my mom went in there maybe a few weeks ago. And kind of started cleaning it out. And you're talking about, remember, my grandparents were the original owners of this house. So this house was built in 19, I don't know, 60 something maybe. And they bought it for like 20 grand, you know, in San Jose. And uh, there's just living there that long. There's a lot of stuff that ends up building. So they went through the whole house, very emotional time, whatever. And they all said, hey, let's do Christmas here. Let's have all the families come and do Christmas here. Now I have such a big family and I'm not talking like super extended family. It's literally my my grandparents, their kids, their kids' kids, okay? So it's like my mom's like, side of the family because yeah. we have a whole nother side of the family wow. that we can't possibly invite, just too many people. So that's the people, but everybody has a lot of kids and all that stuff. So we said, let's, let's have everybody at Nona's house for Thanksgiving. And usually there's always a few people missing. There's just a lot of people and people are married. So sometimes they go to their in-laws house. But this was one of the few times where everybody showed up, which was nice. It was really nice because my grandmother's getting old. So it was like, this is going to be nice to do that. But yeah. remember, this is a San Jose track home. Yeah, it's like 2,000 square feet, you Maybe. Said. Okay. Wow. So- <laughs> Packing them in. Well, we had the garage set up with tables. We mm -hmm. had, of course, the dining room set up, the kitchen set up, the patio set up. Uh, I mean the, the living room set up with tables. So, so anywhere you could kind of plop down. Yeah. Like fold yeah. out tables, folding chairs, everybody brought food and it was just, it, and it, there's a lot of babies now just yeah. cause my cousin, my, my brother has, uh, you know, two kids now, both of them under three. I have mine under three <laughs> plus my two older ones. My cousin Alex has now two under three. My cousin Gabriel has one, but has one on the way. 
So now we got all these babies on top of it, plus the teenage kids and all that stuff. So we all show up and it's just, it's a lot. Pretty quiet and chill. Huh? No, not at all. Yeah. So we get, we get there and it's just, bro, it's in your face. My little ones are not used to this. When mm-hmm. I was a kid, and I was trying, I was explaining this to Jessica and I'll tell you why in a second why I explained this to her, but when well, I you, was a kid. You don't need to explain. She's just like me. So I know exactly why you'd have to yeah, talk to yeah. her. Well, we'll get into it, right? We'll yeah. get into it. When I was a kid, we were always, we were together with a lot of people at least once a week. So every week I grew up having Sunday dinners and being around 20, 30 people just every Sunday. And so we were just used to it, okay? My little ones aren't used to it. They do this once a year, twice a year at most. And they're so young that they don't remember the last one. So it's like the first one they ever did where there's so many people. Mm -hmm. As soon as we walk in, my daughter clings onto my wife and she could tell on her face. She's like, because there's just a lot of people and a lot of people want to give hugs and kisses and everybody wants to say hi. Sure. My son clings onto her leg, okay? So she can't, and they, they don't even want to come with me. I'm trying to like take them from her. They don't want to. They don't even want to come with me. Uh, they just want to be with mom. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Jessica was like, I need to, like at one point, she's like, I'm leaving. And I'm like, okay, let's go in the other room. Let's, because it's just, she can't do anything. <laughs> the, she, every, everywhere she goes, she's got both kids. <laughs> Wow. That's, can't eat. Yeah. Oh, so much, right? It's just crazy. That's a lot. At, at some point, I was able to kind of pull my son away, then my daughter for a little bit. You know, we were trying to eat in the garage with everybody. So Jessica picks three, you know, three places to sit. I go and get plates for everybody. But my kids are just literally climbing on it. They don't want her to let her go. There's literally, I mean, I'm telling you, I'll send, I'll show you guys pictures. You're sitting like butt cheek to butt cheek in the garage. <laughs> yeah. Pack. You can't get up and move. Yeah. So she's like, you know, freaking out. So I'm like, let's go upstairs. We'll go sit by ourselves in a room. We'll have our food there. We'll try and do the thing. So we did that. That helped a little bit. But it was just, it was chaotic. It was, uh, now again, I still find myself getting a little anxious, but because I grew up that way, mm-hmm. not nearly as bad as when you show up and this is not how you roll or what you did or whatever. Yeah. So Jessica had a tough time. The kids had a tough time. And at one point, we were going to do a family picture where everybody was supposed to fit in the living room. Wow. <laughs> okay. <That's true>. Yeah. <laughs> Kid, now this is now the, the the reasoning is my grandmother's, you know, she's she's mm-hmm. her health isn't good. Right, right. She's older. And every time we all get together, it's not you want to capture it. We want to capture yeah. it because yeah. who knows, right? So imagine organizing everybody in a room this size. No, smaller than yeah. this. Now who does that? Is there like a point person or is there a few? Oh, it's my 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 sister and my aunts are trying to organize this. Mm. So we're trying to squeeze everybody, including babies. So you're trying to hold kids. Oh my God. People are up against you. The kids are freaking out. Yeah, yeah. And my sister's yelling, everybody go, go over here. Go out. One more time. All right, one more picture. Wait, you got to look. And it's just like, oh my God. I hear my cousin Alex. He's got his little girl. And he's like, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but we got some pictures. It was good. And by, Now, here's what's funny. This always happens. The last 15 minutes, <clears throat> my son warms up, wants to play with everybody, and then yeah, we're going to go, I don't yeah. want to leave. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> we're never oh, going to leave. Yeah. Kids now are funny. Like now, so that was Thanksgiving, and it was like it was it was a bit it was a bit much. But you know, we we were organizing these Sunday you know dinners to try to just get more people together more often. Because yeah. I mean, you can't do that to little kids, especially yeah, where they just you know once a year you show up and there's a million people that they aren't necessarily familiar with. Familiarize with and they're just in their face because yeah. my family's very in your face. It's yeah. very much like that. So you, yeah, I know you understand Adam. Well, so <laughs> I, but I can't. So so funny. What the audience doesn't know is uh, off air. We were, I was I came in this morning venting about my my Thanksgiving right, and you, Sal just kind of sitting there quiet, and I can't help but think. So has it has hearing me vent about how it is for me and Katrina's family helped you with that perspective with Jessica or did you already kind of see it anyways, or did, has it helped? In the beginning, it was hard uh, to understand because I, uh, you grew up I, in it. I just grew like, up in just it. like Katrina. Yeah, Katrina, it's, it's Katrina not, is, is very disconnected. It's not my awareness. Yeah. It's, it's because if you brought me around your big family, yeah. Um, it wouldn't bother me. I wouldn't have the same experience because I have it on my side. That's right. You would adapt right to it. No yeah, problem. yeah, yeah. So, but yes, it does help to hear kind of what you go through and understand. I understand Katrina's, you know, what she probably gets from it and how you guys have to, you have to compromise. You just have to. Just that, that's mind. been the, I mean, God, this were 13 years, right? That's probably been one of the the greatest time because it's tough. And, and I understand from from your, your perspective yeah. and her perspective because- um, man, you, you guys love that. 
and it, and it is just how you were raised. So part of the chaos is just part of the process. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And it says, and we're all together. And so we embrace it and we love it. And so I, and I see that from her family and inside I'm like, my skin's crawling. I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> get me the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like I can't do it. But over years I've become more and more patient with it. And I think the, 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 the like I would say this is probably one of the most successful Thanksgiving holiday, big events that we've had as far as like, you know, no, there was no fighting. There was, everybody was good. And I think a lot of that is just really, truly understanding each other. Like Katrina knows that, you know, I'm on day four in a row of, you know, loud music, two in the morning. Well, you, you're next level because you guys don't, it's not just a party you go to and go home. No, yeah, you yeah. guys Dude, spend the night nighter. and do four days. A, a week, a yeah. week. Yeah. And that's like every, the Christmas is like that. Thanksgiving is like that. And they're, I mean, people on couches and blow up mattresses in rooms. Like, I mean, it's, it's three, four to a room. Yeah. Like yeah. it's, you're, you're stepping over each other. There's yeah, that's no, a big deal. I don't know if Jessica would be able to do that. Cool. That I mean, be- luckily, luckily I'm at the Truckee house. And so that, that place is a good sized place. And so I could kind of disappear. And what's great about my wife is that she understands me now that I can, and what's, what also has helped me. Cause in the past I would look like such a bad guy, but what's great is my son is me. Like he fucking is to a T by about the third or fourth day. He's over it. Yeah. He's just like, the, you could tell, and he wants to, and he, and you know how much my son is like yeah. loving, and what, like he doesn't ever get in at it. Like he all of a sudden gets fussy. He want, he doesn't want to be around. He doesn't even want to play with his cousin who he loves to play with. Like he's like over it. Dad, I just want to go watch cartoons with you, and so I can kind of disappear with him and go off in a room, or we sat out by the fire for hours, just him and I. Why the house is like loud, loud music and drinks and shots and everything like that, and we're like over in a corner for like hours by herself. And in the past, if that was just me, it would be an issue. Cause then I look like the outsider who just doesn't want to be with yeah. everybody. Mm-hmm. And so that was really People hard. take it personal. They do. So Katrina's brothers and family. Yeah, of course I get it. Would be, would be take it personal. Yeah, what's the matter? Doesn't like us. Yeah. Or, and yeah. then, and then Katrina's in this like weird predicament. Why are you like this? And it's like, why can't you? And it's like, Oh my God, I just want to break. At least with Max, it's like this nice excuse. Everybody sees the way he's acting and he doesn't want. And so they're like, Oh, Adam's taking care of Max. And so it's like, <laughs> so it's accepted. So it's like this beautiful like uh, thing that's happened where it's like, Oh cool. My son needs a break. I need a break. Like we just kind of disappear. For it's a little just bit. over. It's overstimulation. Yeah. Is what it, it's a lot of everything. Well, the other thing too is that like so when you come from like you and her, it's like you guys have this abundance of love and energy and everyone together, and it's, it seems so obvious. Like why wouldn't someone love that? And if, and the other side where I come from, where it's just like oh dysfunctional. We rarely got together. We did all, but because I grew up that way, I've also learned to love some of those things. So like man, I actually love just. Like we got back, it was me and Katrina and Max, and the fire was lit. And we made popcorn. Yeah. We watched the movie. The house was silent. Like, man, I was like, I love this. And so there's a part of me that that loves that, even though I appreciate the the love and energy and everything that comes with the big family and all that stuff like that. And I tell you, I mean, my thanks. We go around the table and we say what we're thankful for, and this big chaotic family is what I said I was thankful for because now having a son boy, do I really appreciate, I mean, I truly believe it takes a village to raise a good kid and having a lot of family that's that close, that uh, that in itself is worth. Yeah, I don't, all- look, I don't deny the work. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. There's a lot of noise, chaos, stimulation. You don't have um, space necessarily to go kind of gather yourself or whatever. I get all that. I do. I just grew up in it. So um, I'm, can be more tolerant, I guess, maybe the right word, or or I don't know. I know there was one moment where I was sitting there, and I was just the whole time I was feeling extreme gratitude the whole time. And I'm looking around. At one point, my <laughs> uncle's doing the prayer before we eat, and I'm looking in the room, and there's the garage is packed, and there's people in the hallway because everybody fits in the garage, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking back and forth, and I'm thinking, if I were on my deathbed, these were the people that would probably be sitting next to me, what you know, as I you know slipped off or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it was just, it was a lot of gratitude. It really is. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's, but I do get it. I get it. It's overstimulating because look, there was a, when I went to Arkansas to visit Jessica's family, we had to stay in those, uh, what were they called? They're like, uh, mobile units or whatever. They, they, they parked them out there. I'm, we went out, it was humid. There's mosquitoes everywhere. There's pets everywhere. That's, 
totally overstimulation for me. That's to- I wasn't comfortable with that. And I could, I knew I could feel it like, Oh, this is yeah. anxiety inducing. So it's, I mean, I get it. I yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate us doing it, but it's, there's a compromise. In other words, maybe not every holiday, maybe there's some holidays where we have the quiet, you know, yeah. and we just spend the time just with us. We do something small. And then the other ones where we have, you know. Yeah. Do you, were you in here when, I don't know if you heard, I was talking to Doug, I think Sal, I think you overheard of, so this was the year I brought up that I'm going to disrupt the tradition a little bit and mm-hmm. change things mm-hmm. with Max. And it didn't bother me until last year. Be, and last year was a little crazy. We had, I think, 25 or 30 people opening presents. There was a fire. The house almost burnt down. We had to move the Christmas from one party to the other, uh, oh, yeah. one house to another house. <laughs> yeah, I remember right. That. You know, and, and my son's at three right at that point, right? He's three years old. He's now into presents and stuff like that. And it was just, and we, we fit in Katrina's mom's house, which is 2,000 square feet, 30 people plus 400 Christmas presents, right? All in one little, one little living room, right? And when you have that many people with that many presents, uh, and most all are adults, but two kids. It's like this, like, you know, system, you know, busting through, there's wrapping paper everywhere. Oh, I know exactly what that's like. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Right. So you get it. And now you go, now you go. I, yeah. And I'm like, man, like I, and I don't know, maybe because I just had this weird vision when I was a younger, when I was younger, way before I ever had a kid or any settled down that, you know, I wanted to surprise my son with the Santa gift and wait downstairs till he Take came down. Time. Yeah. Watch it. See videotape it from behind the couch and see him see his bike for the first time. And Oh my God, look what's, and then capture that moment, yeah. let him ride it, put it together with him. Like, so I kind of always had that in my mind. And like, as I started to watch the way, like how this family does everything, I was like, Oh wow, this, I'm not going to get that. And I'm like, man, that's a big deal. And I remember I first started communicate with the Katrina. It was like, that that was like blasphemy dude to, to break that, kind of tradition of how we do things and over time she's starting to understand you know that part and that like man there's got to be compromise because i'm it's not fair for her to rob that completely of me and i'm like i'm not saying we won't do that still but i want to be able to have that moment so katrina thought she was going to try and get the whole family to like agree to like changing the tradition so that she didn't have to really fully compromise (laughs) everyone does it yeah yeah right and so it was like bro it was literally i felt like i insulted everybody by saying like listen it was just too much man i said and i told them i said just like i just told you guys like i i desire that and so i want that i want that moment with my son and then we'll come over and we'll come do everything with you guys and so this come this year will be like the first time that Katrina and I will do like an intimate, just me, her and Max will open presents that we, we got each other. And mm-hmm. then we'll go do the whole family thing. And you could see like, like half the, half the family understood, like half the family have other married people like They're Jerry. Also- yeah. Jerry has a husband who doesn't, who's like me, you know what I'm saying? So she like totally Jerry gets it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then Katrina's mom totally gets it. Cause her husband was like that too. But then their other siblings are like, you could just see the look on their face. It's like, I literally just what? offended everybody <laughs> so much that I don't want to do it. Though. And they're like explaining to me that their kids, our kids grew up this way, you know? And they're fine. Look at them. <laughs> it's like, okay, great. Don't get caught in that art. Can I just give you a piece of advice? Yeah. Don't get caught up in that conversation. No, you can't. My kids are fine. Then you do the whole like, oh, really? Because John. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, totally. He's I a don't... raging alcoholic. Yeah. So, so he graduated. Yeah. You know, like, I just find it. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to get in that, in that, yeah. caught up in that conversation. But I mean, it's, it's so funny. You hear so, like, uh, I, I know my. my it's si- just, it's just, you, it's just, look, if you grow up a particular way, I think you get used to certain things and they just you just become either tolerant of it or it doesn't affect you as much like i remember going to sicily at the age of 12 before that i was two when i went there so at 12 i went there and it was such a it it was such an assault on the senses Mm -hmm. to go there like we go to my dad's town my my dad's family's not well off at all so we're like in the middle of like you know the city that you know kind of whatever and there's cars honking everywhere and people are yelling. Everyone's on top of each other in every house. We go to this aunt's house and we're just stacked on top of each other and just cigarettes. People are smoking them and drinking. And in the morning, there's cars that drive through the neighborhood that honk and tell you to get your bread and get your fish. It's at 6 a.m. It's, you know, the windows are open because oh there's God. no AC and you hear the neighbor across the street snoring because the air, the, the sound. Ec- and I was like, <laughs> yeah. bro, I, I, at 12 years old, I was like, this oh, is, wow. this is crazy. I can't yeah. do this. Right. <laughs> yeah, and my dad is like, 
Yikes. At the most peace he's ever, you know, he's yeah. like, so like, oh yeah, it's my childhood. This is what I grew up with. It's like white noise. Yeah, like, yeah like, oh, he was so relaxed. In it, oh, and I was yeah. just like, oh my God, what's wrong with him? It was like, so funny. This yeah. is too much. That's so funny. I can't do this. Hey, speaking of too yeah. much, who was it? Was it you, Sal? Who was talking about the prices for Black Friday and stuff like that? Like some of these, like- oh yeah, there's a lot of viral stuff going around where people are going to like big department stores and they're like, Black Friday sale. And then they'll reach behind the tag and pull the tag out behind it. And it was like the same price. <laughs> Just, yeah, dude. I saw that like, uh, and Courtney showed me actually like one of those deals. And then you did the math and it literally just like took away the tax and like the shipping. And then like had the same exact price that it yeah. was like normally like retail. And I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't realize that. There's a, a of- there's a viral video, a McDonald's viral video. Maybe Doug could find it where a guy buys a meal and it's $16. At McDonald's. Wow. wow. And people are like up in arms. Did you hear uh, Andrew? He went to um, Costco and saw Viore. And, they're, they're at and Costco? He, yes. They're wow. at Costco. And at first he saw the price and he's like, oh, I didn't think it was that much of a deal. Then he went on the website and realized, oh, wow, the, their prices had gone up from what it was wow. before. And then he went back to go completely sold out. They sold out all the all the Viore, right? You said it was the with the meta joggers you were looking for over there. Yeah, the meta jogger pants. Those are my those are my favorite ones. Wow. When I was there, like you said, I wanted them, but I was like, ah, oh, maybe not now. I'll come back for them. And then I double checked to see this price online. They went up, so I went back to check literally the next day, and they were sold out. And there was hundreds of them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah you know, speaking of Viore, so you know, I, every year I do the the day after Thanksgiving workout with like my cousins and stuff. Yeah. So yeah this year yeah. we did it at my house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we did it at my house in the garage and, you know, we're having a great, great time, great discussion as usual, great workout, a lot of father talk, which was kind of cool. Then we talk about like, you know, the, all, inevitably there's always like some business idea that comes up, right? I don't remember what the business was. It, the reason why Viore reminds me of this is because my cousins were debating over the name of the fictional business that mm. they would build and why one name is better than the other. And I, wow. I was explaining to them, I'm like, guys, the name of your business <laughs> plays almost zero role to the very bottom of the in your uh, success. Hierarchy. Now you yeah. can make a name so bad that it crushes your business. Sure, sure. But aside from that, it makes no. And then I use Viore as an example. It's like, what does Viore mean? Yeah. And look at that, like Viore. Who, who knows what Viore? Yeah, yeah. What does it even mean? Like, it's hard to say. It's hard to spell. Yeah. I mean, it almost, made work. almost every brand. I mean, Pepsi and Coke. Yeah. Nobody think cares. about it with that Kleenex. I yeah. mean, these are things that like are are now they're iconic brands. Yeah. But they meant nothing before they were before they were a thing. The so. name of your business means almost nothing. Yeah, you know, I remember really learning does. that as an entrepreneur. What does that I say, know. Doug, about the McDonald's thing? Yeah, so uh, sixteen dollar McDonald's meal leaves fans fuming. Beloved fast food chain no longer affordable. What did he buy for sixteen bucks? So yeah, say? so it's a Big Mac. Uh, let me see where that is. Uh, yeah, burger, a large fry, and a drink. Sixteen bucks. Yep. Wow. What? Is I don't understand. Isn't that I've all, noticed that with Chipotle? Isn't that on the too. value like meal? Like they're all I, I, I mean, it's been a long time since I went to McDonald's, but aren't they all like four ninety nine, five ninety nine, six ninety nine or something like that? They used to be. <laughs> I don't know now. Wow. Haven't been there forever, so I don't know. I mean, but. that's a what's a Big Mac is a what a number one, right? A big that's a number one, right? I would uh, think so. I don't know. You don't know the, oh I can oh let's see if you can remember. Number one is the Big Mac. I think meal. the number four is number a double quarter pounder of cheese. Number four is a quarter. It is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there number you go. number two I is never the liked McDonald's. Is the number two the two double cheeseburgers or the two cheeseburgers? Uh Andrew, uh, I feel like you should know this. <laughs> I'd get the chicken nuggets there. Basically. You don't know these? <laughs> of you don't know yeah, yeah. <laughs> like literally every everything time, else. Bro. I'll just have a twenty piece chicken McNugget. <laughs> yeah, and bro. Lots like, of barbecue you know, sauce. I can handle it. Before McDonald's. he gets it though, he's like, What's the toy? So yeah, a Big Mac in California, according to this, is five dollars and eighty nine cents. Just, just for the Big Mac. Mac. Just for the Big Mac. Wow. That used to be what you would get the whole thing for. They used mm. to be like right. th- cheap. Two ninety nine, three ninety nine, four ninety nine, five ninety nine. Then Do I you remember ninety nine cent cheeseburgers? No, do you remember? Do you remember Wednesdays and Sundays? What was that? Twenty nine cents and oh, twenty nine cents for and thirty nine. Yeah, hamburgers what? were twenty nine cents yes. and, and cheeseburgers were thirty nine cents. Yes, on Wednesdays and Sundays. I remember, well, fifty cent night at the boardwalk, you get like uh, all kind like burgers and hot dogs and, and like corn dogs. God, but so, there's no way they could do that now. So, oh, so McDonald's and Chipotle to raise prices in California. New Chipotle oh, was raising their prices oh, as minimum wage increases. Uh, oh, workers. that's how they're going to justify it. Okay. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that, that's a, just, they have that's, to. I know. Makes sense. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, so it's, I told, remember I told you guys thing. I have a client who owns like nine of these McDonald's 
And she's they're going like, to go all AI. They're all going to be automated. The say. franchise owners have like really slim margins. They don't have big margins. Not at all. Fast food is tiny margins. And every she's like every time they do minimum wage like that, it's like it completely eats into the franchise. Of course. The, the, and they they and McDonald's is the one that makes out on all of it, right? Because they're not, not only are they making their little franchise fee and the little bit of the, I forget what top line they make, but then they, they're really a real estate company. Like so, they're they're paying down properties yeah. while also like making a, a revenue stream. Dude, right? that twenty nine. I remember now that twenty nine. Yeah. 49 cents. That was Wednesdays and Sundays. That was a bulking dork like kid. <laughs> high school, I was me. I, in high that school, was a bulking dream. In high school, I, lived, I, go off, buy 10 I of live them. Off, lived off of that. Did you? Uh huh. In high school, I was like a go to every Wednesday. We all and have Sunday. autoimmune issues now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> of that. I go for like the Colossus Burger. What is that right there, Doug? So this Jack was apparently at a rest stop that had a McDonald's, but uh, Big Mac meal, $17.59, quarter pounder meal. Seventeen ninety nine. That used to be a big ass gourmet burger at a restaurant, and now that's McDonald's. Wow. wow. I mean, I know I'm paying like because I I DoorDash food a lot, and I know I pay extra b because of that. But I'm I've been telling Katrina, I'm like, this is like if there's one thing I want to solve this next coming year, it's like eliminating this because the meals for the, my family of three is like eighty to a hundred dollars. Easy. Dude. Yeah. Easy for fast food. I got four kids, bro. So you just. Yeah, I can imagine. DoorDash. I'm sure you're a couple if hundred DoorDash bucks. Is, if DoorDash is going up in value in the stock market, it's probably because of me. <laughs> yeah. I think it's it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And I, I think I, I only pay like a three buck fee, so it can't be all DoorDash that I'm getting crushed by. There's more than that. There's a delivery fee plus that. I don't well, I pay the membership, that. so I already have the- So do I. Oh, uh, okay. But so. I think that you still pay more than- the, you, you must, because it doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, unless everybody has just gone up significantly. By the way, can I tell you guys, you know what they do, by the way? if you, I don't know if you've noticed this. Areas where there's lots of like small restaurants, like this, those centers with lots of little restaurants. Yeah, they double up. No, there's people parked there, and that's all they do. Oh, just wait. They Literally, they just wait. Yeah, yeah. With with their phones, yeah, yeah. and I saw them the other day. Then, like, and then they double up. If you so, he, did you notice that DoorDash has the option for Express for an extra, which two means you don't get you don't get so, two deliveries on yours. Yeah, that's right. Otherwise, almost everyone now, if you don't pay for that two ninety nine extra Express, then you're going to have to wait because yours is probably your yeah. your order is coming with another order. Can so. I just say that the most the the one thing that will almost set me off to the point where I want to punch someone in the face is when I get a DoorDash delivery that's wrong. <laughs> that has to be the most annoying thing in the world because you're waiting and you're hungry and then you get it and you're like, oh, great. Yeah. It's got all the stuff I didn't I want. can't eat this. <laughs> oh, boy, that happened to me. The other day. Well, I so imagine cool. that happens to you quite a bit because I know you have special orders and so that's not like ordering online or ordering like like a takeout type of stuff like that it is never good for like somebody who has yeah. like, I don't want this, I need that because <laughs> yeah. yeah. they're just. I want I want to hear about Justin's injury. So what, what happened to you? <laughs> What happened to you, dude? I heard you, you injury. Dude. I heard you pulled it's, your bonch or something snafu, like that. Snafu, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I came in. I saw Kyle. I was like, "Hey, were you working with? Were you? Yeah. With how Justin? did you guys hear about? It? I, I came hear in and saw. Okay, so I came in I and saw anybody. Kyle, and I and I saw that he had posted you in the story. Yeah. And so I was like, "Oh, dude, did you work with Justin this weekend?" He goes, "Yeah, yeah, no." I said, "Oh, I didn't know." He's like, "Yeah, no, I'm tired." He's like, "I had, I had, to, I had to sub in for him." I'm like, "What do you mean a sub? <laughs> Justin couldn't handle the workout." <laughs> That's why. That was my first thought. He goes, "No, dude, he's, he hurt his hamstring." I was like, "Why did he pull the hammy doing this?" Yeah, dude. Uh, what were you doing? This is the first time, bro. Okay, so I mean, we're doing a shoot for cheerleader kids. content. You know, I'm not going to reveal exactly what it is yet, but <laughs> Maps uh, cheerleader. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm not used to Maps all those high kicks. kicks. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm doing like sprints and everything. And I'm like, dude, okay, I just don't run. Like, okay. And hanging out with you guys doesn't help, right? Like sitting in these seats all the time. And like, I've, you I know. Low key just blamed us for I injury. just did blame you. <laughs> take, take that for what wow. it is. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't move fast anymore. And so it was like, I was prepping myself i started getting back into muay thai i'm like trying to get in condition because i knew i was gonna have to like at least move explosively and like do all stuff well that didn't really translate well to sprinting on a field but really what did it for me was like i was doing like i was backpedaling and then i, I went to like kind of twist and and rotate into, into a sprint and my hamstring just cramped up so hard it just like literally like i started just immediately like gimping around like i like i had a hitch in my in my gait like and so i, I was trying to like work through it and muscle my way through like the, like this looks terrible Did you, have you guys kyle rub it out for you make sure it I, I tried he 
Did you he try? Did you try and dress Kyle to look as much like he's possible? <laughs> so, dude, so I was like, okay, look, I got you here, Kyle. Okay, <laughs> you, like, you Eli, look the closest to this me. This is what we're gonna do. Yeah. Like, and I had like special shoes and everything I bought for this shoot. And I'm like, what size shoe are you, Kyle? And I was like, <laughs> oh, no, like eleven, like ten. I'm like, oh, this is gonna, this is gonna work. I got 11s right here. He's like, you're going to wear these. You're going to wear my shorts. You're going to wear my shirt. You're going to be my body double. Wow. I only had four more exercises to go. That I works. went through the whole thing. That works. And then had like, you know what your issue is, Justin, is you don't know how to not go as hard as you can. You just don't. We've when we, I know. When we used to do YouTube video exercise videos, when you're demoing an exercise, grab a light weight, show your good form. No, Justin's got to load the bar. I don't want people well, to think I'm lifting weights too light or whatever. <laughs> okay. Like you're demoing. So this, so this is shoot number two. That first shoot was in here where I had to do all the yeah. exercise with the weights and everything. And to your point, I was debilitated for three days. Yeah, because <laughs> you don't go light. <laughs> it's a demo. And it's like four workouts in one because you're shooting all the videos. I am <laughs> very aware of this program. That I'm yeah, I am very much, uh, I know what's going into that. I did the whole thing. Yeah, um, that's great. Yeah, so yeah, I I mean, we got, what was cool is I got to shoot a lot of it at my high school in like the field and everything there. Uh, and so we have really like the, I guess cinematography background, all that looked really cool. Bro, did uh, you have the BPC? Yes. Put it. Did you put it straight yes. in the hamstring? And I, I'm gonna tell you right now, it feels great, bro. I, I was like, you ain't gonna sell me. Shocked, I told you that. I hey, told you that. Did you I put it shocked. straight in the hamstring? Yeah. It it's legit. Yeah. Like, cause I was I was in pain last night. Like, you know how long an injury takes to heal for you, cause you know your body. Yeah, and. Honestly, and like, I don't know. And I'm like, I have like a bit of an ego about it because I went through like my entire sports career, like with one injury, like one legit injury. And like, that was at the very end, like my senior year where I like tore my MCL. But even then I went back the next game and had a knee brace and still played. Mm. Um, and so for me, it's like, I don't know. It's, it just sticks with me. Like I, I made every practice. I was Iron Man every year, you know? And it's just like, like, I don't, I don't know. I had had this like sort of chip on my shoulder about that kind of so that really irritated me that I couldn't like finish four exercises. <laughs> I, like I was like, oh, but uh, I thought it was hilarious that I could like body double uh, yeah. Kyle in there. Well, so you get an Easter egg. Hey, what's one. gonna be so cool is if you could barely tell. You know what I'm saying? Because did, did Eli shoot it a little different <laughs> yes. to try? Okay, so, oh, so okay, good. So like we go to like the, the sprint. Like so, one of them like you do like a track start, right? And so I'm like I'm like in the track start like this. I just posed it. And then we're going like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to watch I it now. I'm uh, so glad you guys yeah. made the extra effort to kind of make it look yeah. like it's doing We would it. lean into it hard, dude. Like, like we're trying to like create like a well, Hollywood that's a good body movie or something. You. Yeah. You're, you're like, don't, don't turn to the camera as you're running back, you know, make sure you're like, yeah. oh, dude, my, yeah. my brother, when he came to the workout, his, he had tennis elbow so bad that he's been wearing a brace and he let me put BPC right in it and it was gone. Like literally right there. It, oh, wow. Right there. He started working out and he's weird. like, bro, I don't feel it. I know. It's weird. I know. Cause I, I, I literally was like, and I can't run today, but like, I don't have any pain. Like I'm fine. Weird. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I know by far it's the best one for sure. All right. So the shout out today is us. <laughs> Our, uh, black, Fr by the way, this is, has to be one of the biggest black Friday, like sales or whatever. So we extended it for cyber Monday. It's the exact same thing. 60% off all products, all bundles across the board. Same exact sale as Black Friday. People are just going crazy. So we said, let's extend it. So same place, mapsfitnessproducts.com. And then the code this time is Cyber Monday. But again, 60% off everything across the board. All right. So Enterra is a peptide company that makes skincare and hair regrowth products. Now, these are legit. They're not like the stuff you buy at the store. These are peptides that actually accelerate the body's ability to heal improve the quality of your skin, and encourage hair regrowth. And right now, everything is on sale. Everything is on sale. You're looking at massive discounts. So go check them out. Go to enteraskincare.com forward slash MPM, and then use the code MPM for an additional discount. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Colin from Alberta. Colin, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, uh, first let me say this is uh, quite an honor to be able to talk to you guys. Uh, I've been following the show for a few years and uh, you've really changed my outlook on uh, fitness and programming especially. So uh, thanks for that. You got it. 
Uh, so I'll just get to my question. A uh, little bit of background, not too much. I guess I'm 38 years old, 5'11", around 198 pounds about now. And I've, I've been I'm an early morning riser. I've been um, working out at about 4.30 in the morning, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, following MAPS Anabolic. Uh, I've done it two times now. I'm just about done phase three for the second time. And I've noticed a lot of strength and muscle gains, um, but I'm still having an issue with the fat around the midsection. And I remember hearing you guys talk a couple of weeks ago about undulating calories. Uh, I was just wondering, for someone who works out early in the morning like that, is it better to feed your body the day before with the higher calories? Or is it better to feed after your, your workout on the day of the workout? Uh, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. This is like a splitting hairs uh, type of thing. Individual yeah. variants. For yeah. You. So, I mean, you can play with either one, see what what seems to feel better for you. But in my okay. experience, it doesn't really make it doesn't really make a difference um, either way. I mean, um, we've talked about this before about Sal. You like being less fed going into it, and you in them because you're up early. Yeah. I've talked about that. I I prefer being loaded up before I go in. So it's really going to be a personal preference. Like as far as building muscle or body fat percentage, things like that. It's not going to make yeah. it. It's really about how you feel in the workout. And I would play with the two and see which yeah. ones you of like the better. things that you're going to be looking at to help you with the body fat. That one right there is uh, not, it's probably, I wouldn't make the list, right? In terms of what's going to okay. impact, give you the biggest impact for fat loss. When it comes to the fat loss, if you're consistent with your workouts, you're seeing strength gains, so the workout's appropriate, you know, all the other stuff, you know, checks off, good sleep, that whole deal. Then really what you want to do is, is you really, you want to track your calories and see where you're actually at, really track them, see where you're mm -hmm. at, and then decide if you want to cut. Or if you want to reverse diet and get your metabolism up a little more, um, and that's 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 after you track, because your estimations are gonna one hundred always gonna be off. No, nobody ever guesses uh, pro uh, properly where where their calories are at. Yeah, and I did did track for a while there, and I, I kind of figured out my maintenance was around twenty four to twenty five hundred calories. I I just kind of based that on tracking, and then just not really gaining any weight. Um, so I did try dropping down to like 2200 and I wasn't really noticing anything. So I went down to 2000. Um, still not really seeing any movement. So I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm just, it's hard. I got three kids. So sometimes I may not be sticking exactly to the best eating habits, but I'm yeah, my best. consistency with that's important. Uh, and also how long did you stay at the 2000 calories and, and how consistent was that? Uh, so I was at the 2200 for probably a month or so. And then I dropped down to 2000 a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and I've been pretty consistent. Okay. Um, and are you, are you noticing yeah. any changes in your performance? Any changes uh, in the way your clothes feel or fit? Because sometimes you can do a little trade where you build, if you're getting stronger on a deficit like that, or what you think might be a deficit, that's a pretty good sign. Um, the other thing too is it's really easy to almost erase a deficit yes. by going off a day. Yes, especially when it's only 200 to 500 calories. Yeah. You figure 200 right. to 500 calories, and let's get figure you're already off by 100 or so, give or take, because it's not precise. And then you have a day where you move a little less, and then you have a Saturday where you, you eat ice cream with the kids, and it's like literally you just erase that deficit in one. Or it's yeah. such a small <laughs> deficit now that it would take you months to right, notice any, right. any type of progress. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Now, now for a guy your size, uh, you know, two thousand calories, twenty five hundred calories, kind of low, in my opinion. Yeah. How did that? How does it feel eating two thousand calories? Do you feel hungry? Well, I, I, you know, I said that same thing. I, I thought that was low, but I wasn't seeing any movement. And the, I guess the my other point too, like I, I, I have been seeing lots of strength gains and muscle gains. Um. Even at so two thousand, even at maybe the, my calories don't make sense to me. <laughs> even at twenty two hundred calories in two thousand, you saw strength gains. Well, I'm I'm seeing it, yeah. Like I can, wow. I've been following pretty consistent workout programming there from you guys, and and I have put on weight in the last little bit. If you're getting stronger while trying to cut, mm -hmm. and you are you are indeed accurate with your calories. That's a big that's a big if, okay. But if you are indeed accurate and you are getting stronger and your weight's not changing on the scale, 
you're probably building and losing a little bit at the same time. Cause you wouldn't get, if you get stronger, that's going to point to muscle gain. Yeah. I, I, are you, uh, what's your job look like? Are you sedentary or are you moving a lot through? The uh, day? I'm a, I work out in the natural gas industry, so I'm an electrician. So, so you're, it's pretty physical, not, yeah. not all every day, but so, yeah. so I would be a little concerned about how low a calories are. You're a 193 pound dude. You're up by four 30 in the morning. You have a physical job. I, I would think you would be eating a lot more. I would probably want to put you at 25 to 2,800 at least and try and go on like a little bulk. Yeah. I just think that that's really low calorie for a guy your size who's working out and has a physical job and is up by 4.30 in the morning. I mean, that's... By the way, if a, a bulk done properly, what I should... Not properly. A bulk can sometimes make you leaner in the sense that, let's say you went up to 2,700 calories, okay? Mm -hmm. And you ended up gaining four pounds of muscle, but you didn't gain any body fat, okay? You're leaner. You now have right. a lower body fat percentage because it's a smaller percentage. Of and a faster metabolism. That's right. So mm -hmm. so that might be where I, that's where I would go. I would try and get it to where you can maintain eating closer to 3,000 calories. Yes, agreed. Okay. And I should, I guess, add at this point of the, in the year, I am playing men's league hockey as well. So oh, wow. that probably doesn't help. <laughs> Dude, for sure you're not high. Yeah, I would go higher. Yeah, calories. for sure. A good goal. I mean- Someone as active as you are, you should be up 3,500 calories. I mean, that's kind of where you're yeah. strength training. You're also playing hockey and you're a physical, you got a physical labor, laborous job. Even though your body's probably adapted to all your work, you're still moving a lot. Like you can support a lot more calories. So I personally, a good goal for you, if you're a client of mine would be, let's try and keep increasing calories. Let's try and get, uh, you know, 3,500 would be like a really good target, but incrementally work your way up there. Start at okay. 20, 2700, give it a, like two weeks of training there, see how you feel and look, what's going on with strength. So long as you don't look like you're or feel like you're putting on a bunch of body fat, and you're not getting weaker, add another 200 calories and just keep step laddering that until you get more like a place like 3,500. Then I feel like if you go from 3,500 down to 2,500, you should see yourself lean out pretty fast if we did that right. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. All right, man. Thanks for calling in. No, thank you guys. You got it. What this seems to me like, just because I've been doing this for a while, it seems like he's not tracking, right? Yeah, uh, and he's not accurate, right? He's like tracking sometimes and eyeballing it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that has really common, super common. I would yeah. get people like this all the time. And then we really nail down the tracking and they were just off. They yeah. were off by you know a few hundred calories, which is easy to do all day, you know, throughout the whole day. And next thing you know, you're averaging a deficit of 50 calories. Well, now it's going to take you seven months to see any fat loss. It could also be a combination mm -hmm. of tracking accurately when you're good and then not so good That's right. when you're not, right? That's so right. it's like he maybe he is around 2,400, 2,500 when he's tracking and he's watching. And On then an he ideal has, day. Yeah, yeah, then he has Saturday with the kids yeah. and kind of eats off and is like, oh, yeah, that wasn't great. But then that one day is over a 1,000 calorie surplus and so it's canceling out yeah, the Yeah, well, the work. way a lot of people will track is they'll track for a few days. They'll say, oh, now I have a good idea. I pretty much eat like that all the time. And then that's their new number, which yeah. is no, you got to track every single day if you want something accurate. Our next caller is Steven from Australia. Steven, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? It's Good. awesome it's to be here. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Thanks so much for having me. All right. <laughs> um, I've been listening to you guys for about five years. You guys definitely changed my, my life with fitness. Like I would still be that guy running on a treadmill trying to lose weight if it wasn't for you guys. So awesome, thank you. Bro. Thank you. So, <laughs> um, so my question, I suppose the easiest way to put it is I have a butt problem. Um, <laughs> uh, we all do. Let's just stop right Just, there. Justin, <laughs> Justin's your guy. <laughs> I know all the butt problems. Um, so I just finished maps aesthetic. Um, I had a blast doing it. Uh, one of the problems though, I seem to be having, even though I've like had a lot of improvements in my mobility and stuff is I still have a pelvic tilt. So the one where it makes your butt looks like it sticks out really well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have no idea how to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I had a couple injuries in the past lifting. I, 
pretty sure it was due to bad form and ego lifting. Um, it was definitely to my back. So I had to spend a lot of time working on some, you know, my hip mobility with 90 90s and stuff really finally starting to feel good with it, but still can't quite fix this tilt. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, good question. So this actually brings up a good, uh, a good conversation because, you know, when you're looking at what would be referred to as posture deviations, they are not be all end all. They're really just uh, clues and direction. Okay. You all, you have to add that on top of other things to really get a good idea of what may be going on or maybe nothing's going on. So mm -hmm. an anterior pelvic tilt by itself with no pain, if you have good strength, good stability, good control, no problems, yeah. it's probably not an issue. Now, if you're also okay. noticing back pain, if you're noticing hip pain or anything like that, and then you also have an anterior pelvic tilt, well, that starts to point us in a direction of maybe what muscles to look at and to test and to see if there's some stability or some strength issues. But unless you have like pain and stuff right now, mm -hmm. when you're deadlifting and squatting and overhead pressing and stuff like that, if you don't have those issues or lots of low back pain when you walk or whatever, it's probably not an issue. So that's the question okay. I have for you. Yeah. Do, do you noticing any of those Are, problems? Do you have like lower back pain quite substantially? I don't have substantial pain. I definitely notice it feeling tight when I get into a lot of lifts. Like I got to do a lot of stretching and stuff beforehand when I go in to do like my squats and stuff. So I definitely feel it tight. I don't know if I feel it right now to the point where I feel a lot of pain though. Okay. So then what we would try to do is offset that position with muscles that pull you in the other direction just to offer mm -hmm. a little bit more balance. So yeah. uh, really good core exercises that that don't involve the hip flexors are good for this. So like um, hip flexor deactivator crunches. We actually have a video on YouTube. Yeah, it's a good video. Where I teach Yeah, this. I've seen that one. So I would do something like that maybe three days a week and really okay. work on strengthening the core uh, independent of the hip flexors because in an anterior pelvic tilt, what you often see, not always, but we often see are overactive, what would would referred to as overactive hip flexors and a communication between the core, the abs and the obliques and the hip flexors that's not necessarily ideal. I like running a cycle of um, hip thrust here too. So like yeah. if you're doing core training like Sal saying and maybe I sub out my squats for a while and I replace them with hip thrust, I think that'll help too. So, but- okay. The real key is, and the point the boys made is that if if we're not dealing with a lot of issue like pain and stuff like that, and you have a strong core, you squat, you deadlift, you're probably okay. But if you do notice your low back gets achy and you know that you don't really address the core that much, okay, there's definitely room for us to improve and address that. But I also, if you're not, I wouldn't be stressing too much about it. Yeah, because even in the kinetic chain, you might find the ankles, you know, could be a contributor to this and this the stiffness in your lower back. So uh, really, it's it's sometimes it's obvious and it's like, well, I feel this pain direct result of me having this kind of anterior pelvic hilt, tilt. But, um, you know, it, sometimes it could be a little more elusive than that. It could be just the way that your body's compensating from, you know, the ground up. Uh, so to, to just keep with your mobility practices and to see kind of like test your way through that, I think strengthening your core obviously is going to help, uh, regardless of that, just to, to create that kind of bracing effect that you want. So when you're doing anything loaded, you know, you got that extra bit of support. Uh, so working your way through that and really like, you know, if you're doing uh floor bridges or you're doing hip, hip bridges in any sense of it like making sure like the first thing you do is like correct that that tilt uh and mm. get that flat back and, and get your core engaged uh and then from there you know just keep honing in on that uh recruitment process now, what, what core exercises do you do what ab exercises do you do most often um right now it's just like the decline sit-ups um and I can't do the the full leg raises. I go to for the knee raises right now. Yeah. Um, and then, th yeah, that's most of the ones. Oh, cool. Yeah, All right. I was right then. There's a lot of room here. Those are two, okay. uh, those are two exercises that require a lot of hip flexor mm -hmm. um, activation. At the very least, as very, very strong stabilizers. At most, they become your prime movers. Mm -hmm. I would imagine if I saw you do a leg raise, it's probably a hip flexor leg raise yeah. because- <laughs> of what you're talking about. Yeah. So hip flexor deactivator crunches, physio ball crunches done properly, 
and even planks, those active planks like you yes show, yeah. and active planks done properly we all have we have videos for all of those yeah all Dude, those yes. should, yeah i would not do any more decline sit-ups or leg raises um in your core okay. exercises yeah. yeah and actually this is cool because it, i mean if you're telling me you had lots of pain now um then it would take a lot longer but based on what you're saying honestly after a couple of weeks you should notice yeah, substantial there should be a difference there yeah. for sure if yeah. you're doing that that'd be sweet thank you yeah you got it man. <laughs> you got it are you running any of our programs right now? What are you running right now? Um, so I, like I said, I just finished the aesthetic. Um, I, I'm not running anything right now. Um, uh, mostly from the fact that I know that my gym time's a little limited. My wife and I just had our baby girl yesterday. Whoa. So we're, no wonder um, you're so happy. Right. Like, this guy's really happy. He's, he's, so he's a dad. My gym time's going to be a little limited for a few weeks, but, uh, Maps yeah, 15. Uh, that's 15, bro. We're going to send you maps 15. That's the new dad program right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So it's sweet. Thank you. You got yeah. it, man. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for having me. You got All right. it. All right. yeah. easy. He's God got damn. The, he was happy. Oh, I'm like <laughs> this is the happiest dude I've ever seen. Uh, no. He just had a baby. Uh, yeah. He that had that glow. Sense. Yeah, uh, had that I was glow. gonna say some of his Instagram pictures might, uh, you know, decline a bit in terms <laughs> of his posture. You know, selling it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it'd be good to address it. Yeah. No, no it's good. You guys went the morphology route first because I know there's. There's like two, you have, I feel like there's extremes in our space as there is in almost everything. It's either you're, you're pro corrective exercise and like everything is going to kill you and everything, like everything mm. you do is bad and wrong and we need to fix it. And yeah. there's that extreme. And then there's the other camp where it's just like, you know, you, there's nothing you can do. This is how the way your body yeah. is. And it's like, well, no, the, well, okay. That gives us a sign that, okay, there is, there is, could be an imbalance here. You have an anterior pelvis, but if you squat, you deadlift, you do all these movements and you don't have any issues, then, yeah. I mean, I did. So I used to have to, I had such a bad anterior pelvic tilt that by set three of squats, I would be laying on my back on the floor because my yeah. my low back was fried. Yeah. So obviously that, and that's the, that, that's what, okay, there's something there. Once I, once I worked on the ankle and hip mobility, got to a place where I could get into full range of deep, good controlled squats. What it did for my core, my hip strength and stability, eliminated the low back pain yep. completely. It never came back. Our next caller is Matt from Texas. Matt, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Hey, what's up? Good. Thanks for asking. Um, first of all, I just want to say that I appreciate everything that you guys do, the wealth of information you guys provide. Uh, I recommend your podcast to everyone who is in, even has like a slight interest in fitness. Saying they all taught me so much in just the single year that I've been listening. Thank right you. On, I appreciate that. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, of course. Uh, so I'll, I'll just launch into things, a little background on me, uh, and I'll get to my question. Uh, I am 41 years old. I'm 5'11", five, five 185 ish, and I float somewhere between 15 and 18% body fat. Uh, I've been lifting since I was in college at 18. It started as a weight loss journey. Uh, as I left for college at about 325 pounds, and I started to lose weight immediately without all the food from wow. my childhood home in my dorm pantry. Um, wow. I got into the gym with some friends who encouraged me to go with them after a holiday break, uh, and I've been addicted to lifting ever since. So over those 23 years, I've run a handful of programs. Uh, I don't need to go through all of them, but I've done uh, cardio in conjunction with all those, usually 15 to 30 minutes at either the start or the end of my work. Uh, I've seen strength gains using all those programs. I feel like I'm in a great spot physically. I'm also trying to hit 170 grams of protein per day. I'm taking creatine, BCAA powder, and uh, ash ashwagandha supplements, but I'm not really tracking my calories since it's uh, in the past. It's led me to some disordered eating habits when I'm uh, cutting. So uh, hitting the protein goal has just like drastically improved my mental health because I'm allowed to eat basically anything that contributes to my protein goals that day, at least me pretty stated. Um, an educated guest though, put me around 2,700 to 3,000 calories per day. Uh, I'm currently running MAPS Anabolic. I'm in phase three, week three. Don't have any reason to stop that since I'm still seeing strength gains. Uh, I also have a Peloton bike. Hope it's cool to use that <laughs> name brand. Uh, that's my last form of competitive sports I allow myself to do. I tend to do 30 minutes per day on that with some longer 60 minute sessions on the weekend uh, in conjunction with uh, trigger sessions. I know it sounds like overtraining, but I have significantly cut back the amount of cardio and lifting that I do uh, from five days per week just to two, two to three times per day or per week, I'm sorry, uh, with trigger sessions and my daily cardio went from 60 minutes to about 30 minutes a day. Um, okay, so that's a pretty clear picture of what you're dealing with. My question is that I've been lifting so long and I've dedicated the past two years to really adding muscle to my legs. 
Uh, I've been squatting heavy for me, hip thrusting, and have done bodyweight leg circuits. Uh, they include various forms of squats and lunges. I also like to take spin classes that are specifically built around strength, such as climb rides or hit and hills rides that are mimicking going up a hill for a long duration or just sprinting up hills for bursts. Uh, what I haven't been able to do, though, is get my squat above 275 pounds. And every time I get to that range, I can get the bar up one time, but if I tack on anything additional after that, it's a failure. So I'll get up, like, let's say I'll go all the way down, I'll get up about third of the way and I have to bail on the lift. Um, from there, I'll take a few days off and get back to training, but I've still never been able to get past that mark after lifting for however many years. So for comparison, I was able to get my deadlift to 350 pounds, bench to 255, overhead press to 185 and i don't max bench or overhead press anymore due to labral tears uh but those numbers were always good enough for me right. uh so anyway my guess is that this is just a mental block not a physical one however i would like to hear your suggestions on ways to bust through a plateau on a specific lift uh and i am trying to incorporate some novel stimulus and dial back my cardio as a starting point i have a theory i think that your your legs are pretty endurance trained and i think cutting back even more on the Peloton and the rides like that mm. and purely focusing on getting doing some ones. Yep. And you could do in adding some singles, doubles and triples yep. in my training or following like a maps power lift type of protocol. You'll watch that, that squad go. That's my speculation. I, I, I bet if you cut the circuit out and the Peloton riding out, you'll, you're just going to get stronger just by doing that. But both of those are not contributing to your leg strength. Yeah. They're both taken away from endurance. Your leg strength, are endurance. Which is it's okay if that's what you want. Like, like here's the deal. I want people listening to understand yeah. this. There's nothing wrong with doing all that if you're okay with a mixed bag of results. But if you want specifically to get your squat above 275, yeah. the hill rides and the leg circuits are not only not helping, they're taking away from your strength gains. So I would just cut them out. In fact, I bet if you just cut them out. Yeah, you might just and see it just followed and just yeah. strength trained like you like you are. I bet you'll see it go above two seventy five. But what what Sal said is so important for the audience to understand that I think you're doing. A, I think we all agree that you're doing a great job right now, and you're probably really and you're in a healthy place. You're a healthy place, body fat percentage. You're relatively strong. Yep. You got good some yep. cardiovascular endurance. But like, you're asking a specific right. question. exactly. But you're yeah. asking. I want my squat to go up. Why is it not going up? And I, I think we all agree that if you endurance were endurance is not the limiting factor. Like you know, to be able to do more anaerobic, just specific strength focused uh, activity. That's that's really where you're going to get the most totally. success. It's as okay. simple as that. All right, I can do that. Yeah. yeah I appreciate, appreciate all the help. You got it, man. And listen, uh, if you don't have mass power lift, yes. let's send that to you. Yes. Yes. That's a good program for yep. you. And then the other thing is, I do. okay, we'll send that to you. Go and ahead. then follow up with us in, uh, th what do you, what's your squat right now? What's your one rep, one rep max? Oh, one rep max? I don't know. Like the last time I maxed was 275. I'm I'm repping uh, four to six times 225. So it's probably good okay. at that still. I wouldn't be surprised if in thirty days, in thirty days, you you, Over you broke. Yeah, you broke two seventy five. So I would love for you to email us back uh, in thirty days. Let us know what happens. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially awesome. if, especially you if you follow like power lift. So. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll do it. All right, Matt. Thanks for calling in, man. Crush it. Thanks, y'all. Take care. You got it. Yeah. So in even row, and you know, and this is good because I'll, I'll read. Maybe Doug, you could scroll down a little bit because um, I want to read. That what was he wrote. a lot of information for a very simple answer. <laughs> yeah, but he was very. Yeah, but you know what though? Because he gave us all that information. That's why it was to simple. me, I felt like I knew yeah. right away. I was yeah. just like, oh, he's doing a bunch I of know. endurance stuff for his yeah, legs. So, and, like, he wrote here, yeah. and, and so I want to be clear. Detailed. It says, "I also." This is what it says in the question. I also like to take spin classes yeah. that specifically are built around strength such as climb rides or hit hill rides that mimic going up a hill for a long duration. It is not strength. Yeah, if you're doing long durations, no. <laughs> we've crossed over. No. Strength training with a bike would literally be a 15-second like, yeah, high say resistance. Five to 15 seconds max. Sprint. Yeah, yeah. Sprint. And even then, if you're doing it in conjunction Too with, much. Yeah, with a already yeah. great strength training program. Yeah. Then you'd have to rest. That's you'd right. It, substantially it, between. That's right. So, and and I, to make it clear to the audience again, it's just, it, we're not telling this guy that he should just stop doing cardio because it's not good for you because I know that's what people yeah, think yeah. out of this. It's like, you ask a specific question. I want to get my, my squad up. This is not helping that. No. Yeah. And, and if no. we get away from that, it will. If you ask me, I want to be healthy, you're doing a great yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. Keep There's doing what you're doing, Bo. But you got you to gotta understand that you're going to give up a little bit if you want to do all these other things and you want to be very specific but, about it. By yourself. the way, you know, if you look at the top 
cyclists, sprint cyclists, they have massive legs. So you might be thinking, yeah. I thought you said that's not muscle building. Yeah. If you, first off, there's a there's a self selection bias. These are genetically gifted yeah. monsters True. whose legs will build almost with nothing. That's what makes them good at it. And if you took them off of the sprint cycling and all they do was and squat? just had them lift, oh, oh my god, their massive legs would look even more massive. Yeah. So, totally, yeah. Our next caller is Rachel with Christina oh, Hathaway. All right. Hey. So for people who don't know, we had Rachel on the show a while ago. And yes. at the end of that conversation with you, we figured, man, she would be, this would be so good if we could set her up with a really good online coach. And the first person we thought of was Christina. So you guys have been working together for a little bit now, right? Yeah. All right. How's yeah, it going? About four months now. Four All right, how's it going? What's going on? Give us an update. Who do you want to talk to first? <laughs> You're the star of this, so you go ahead. Oh, I'm not. I'm no star. You're the star here. Yeah, but Rachel, um, tell yeah. us what's going on, Rachel. Okay, so I want to go back to why I called you guys. Right, I had originally it was a fitness related question because I had developed a fitness routine that. I used as a coping mechanism throughout, you know, tough times in my life and it wasn't serving me anymore. And I was confused and didn't know how to, you know, move forward. Uh, and so you guys are the fitness moguls. And so I called you, um, you very graciously set me up with Christina and I'll be honest, like I thought, all right, she's going to give me a diet. She's going to give me a workout plan. And every day she's going to want me to log what I eat and, you know, great. I, uh, but it was free. Right. And so, <laughs> Hey, I'm a Jew. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. okay. Uh, ridiculous. Uh, so, okay. When we started the program, you know, originally she had explained the concept of, we called it, you know, we kind of termed it the mold and I want her to explain this because she does a great job, but she taught me that I've got so many voices going on in my head and so many thoughts. Most of the thoughts are not me. Most of the thoughts are from my past and I'm conditioned to think that way. Um, and I guess, you know, it's considered ego or whatnot. Um, and then there are true authentic thoughts that we all feel. And at the time I was conflicted because I knew I felt something authentically, right? Uh, I knew that, this wasn't serving me. I wanted control of my life. And I, I felt that I couldn't, right? It, it was, I, I know that I was able to do hard work and I was able to get through hard things. And I couldn't understand why I couldn't do this, right? Um, we discussed the why. Why do I want to do this? The why essentially was I wanted control of my life. Um, and we started the work. <laughs> uh, and the work, I'll be honest with you, it it sucked. It it wasn't easy, right? It, it it's there were so many times that I called Christina and I'm, you know, I'm crying. I'm on the floor in my garage. And, you know, I I was so it, it was a real breakthrough for me. Like it 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 really, really was. Um, but sorry, I'm gonna get emotional right now. <laughs> Um, I think what I was experiencing, you know, when I went through my divorce was that this is hard work that came to me. And at, at that point, I wasn't able to run from it anymore. And I had to make a change. Right. And this was something that it, it wasn't bad enough where I knew I needed to make a change, but I, I didn't want anything else controlling me. Right. And so what Christina gave me was number one, identifying what was going on, um, the tools to kind of go through it, right? Understanding, all right, this isn't me, right? This is the mold talking and really processing what's the mold, what's me. So over the course of three months, I, I feel like I've become so good at identifying who's talking, right? If it's the mold, I know how to talk back to it now. I have the tools to be able to process, you know, what I'm feeling instead of turning to exercise immediately because that's, you know, that was my vice. Um, but I mean, more so than that, like there are so many things in my personal life that immediately, like upon identifying, hey, that's the mold, right? 
I was able to make a change like right away instead of waiting the months and the years. It's like yesterday I made a really big change in my life that if I didn't do that, I would be staying in a situation that would probably cost 10, 15, 20 years of my life that I feel like I got back. Um, and so what she's done and, and I mean, she's, she's going to be working with me probably for the rest of my life. I'm sorry, Christina, but you're stuck with me. Um, but I mean, the job security, the work is <laughs> incredible. It taught me number one, that just because something is uncomfortable and you don't want to go through it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It kind of means that you probably should. We run from uncomfortable feelings because we don't want to feel that, right? We want to turn to whatever is certainty for us, whatever provides like safety and security. And even though working out for me did provide that, it, it you know it was maybe in a moment but it it started turning into something that like no longer was serving me it was controlling me right so i've become good at talking back to it i've become resolute in this is my life and i'm going to make choices and my own choices and i also feel like i am never ever going to let anybody past parents siblings teachers lifestyle, experiences, addictions, none of that's ever going to control me again. The moment that I was able to identify what was my past controlling me and not serving me and what is an authentic choice that I'm making is when I was able to take control of my life. Like my authentic life started at June. I wrote it down. June 14, June 14, 2023. I'm 36 years old and I feel like I have a shot at a second chance in life. Wow. Awesome. Wow, that's awesome. great, Chris, Christina. If it's okay, if I, if you don't mind me asking a few questions, and and I'm, I'm, I know it's okay because you guys came out here, <laughs> but you know, um, from our observation, when we had Rachel on asking us questions, it became clear to us that she had developed a really abusive relationship with exercise, which a lot of people who are fitness fanatics have experience with, where the exercise becomes um, like a drug and it starts to harm you. And it starts to, rather than add to the quality of your life, starts to take away from the quality of your life. Were we um, accurate with that? And if so, what were the things, because she said it was hard, what were the things that you did or identified with Rachel that helped you guys move forward? Like, how, what does this look like as a coach for someone like you? What would you do with her? Yeah. Um, well, first and foremost, you guys were spot on. I think, you know, in the conversation, there was this kind of light bulb moment of, wait a minute. We're giving her the advice that we normally would, but now as she continues to talk, we're seeing that this relationship with exercise is one that's not healthy for her. Um, and I remember in the conversation too, you know, there was kind of that, do we pull her out of it completely? Do we titrate her down from it? And so um, when we began to work together, it was very clear to me that Rachel was using exercise not only as a way to feel a sense of safety and control, but also to feel that's one part that when she came to me, she said, I do these workouts because it's the only thing in my day that gives me that rush. It gives me a sense of something because throughout her life, everything's been decided for her. She has not had an opportunity to, to share her wants and needs, to be seen or heard, whether it was her, you know, the community that she grew up in and kind of those rigid conform, you know, that, that conformity that, that, that community, um, expects, um, to being the eldest in her family and like, uh, being a caretaker for her, her siblings to also her position in the community, everything was decided for her. She didn't understand how to feel. And so exercise provided that feeling, right. That dopamine hit those endorphins, everything you guys talk about was that drug but just like any other drug every time we get that dopamine hit we need more and more and more and i can't take credit for this i don't take credit for any of this because in you know in all reality she was the one who did all of this work right but i also want to say that when she came to me she had already began chipping away at this 
And so um, she was ready for it. So that's for coaches listening or someone who is struggling with this, like just realizing, like she said, this work is difficult, but if you can make this promise to yourself and trust the process, that's number one for the person coming in. But for me, I needed her to begin to listen to herself. For most of us, we don't have an opportunity to just hear or even think that what is going on internally is worth it, right? So we set up these little emotional check-ins that she would do throughout the day to just listen and witness her experience inside, right? Because I've never, if I've always been told by everything outside of me of how to think, feel, and do, I probably don't know what's going on. So I need to just sit and witness it as if I'm witnessing a TV show, right? And so that was one of the um, activities or tasks that we did. Uh, Then as I'm witnessing, now I'm aware of this thinking pattern, right? This thinking pattern that is continuing to tell me, do more, do more, you're not good enough if you don't. All of the the inner critic messages and voices, right? And through that, we did the externalization of saying, okay, I want you to personify, like what does that feel, that, that thinking pattern feel like to you? If it was standing outside of you, what would it look like? And she says, it looks like mold. Mm -hmm. It feels like mold, right? So this externalization not only helped her start disconnecting this thinking pattern from herself, but also it makes it a little bit more tangible to say like, oh, this isn't me. This is something that I've adapted to or, or that has been conditioned in my life. And just like it's been conditioned, I can recondition it. Right, I can relearn it. And so then we go into, okay, we're aware. We know when it's happening. Now, what do we do with it? And this is where the discomfort comes in. Sometimes we literally just have to sit with discomfort because if we are not getting uncomfortable, we are not creating change, right? And sitting through discomfort also requires tools to help you get on the other side. All of our emotions are transient. They're, they have a beginning, a middle, and end. And we need to kind of ride that wave of the discomfort. And so teaching her skills to sit with herself and know I survived. I survived it again. And eventually over time, those big you know, hills that she would go over became smaller and smaller, and more tangible and easier for her to witness and, and experience. And then through that, that little voice, her authentic self became louder and louder and louder. So those are some of the techniques that I used uh, with Rachel. Now, Christina, I know that we're, we're highlighting Rachel right now, but in your experience, how common is this with the general population that's using exercise? How common is it? And is it like a spectrum of, you know, a, 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 most all people have it and it's just in, in, in some end of that spectrum like how often do you see this in, in people's behaviors around exercise i would say 99 percent of people struggle with this wow. you yeah. know you guys have been running out of lane smith's educational theories and if we look at that we look at attachment and so many of us can see how we had struggles in our upbringing that taught us we're only good enough if we please others if we are perfect or we perform in a certain way if we overachieve or if we're invisible right so if i'm learning that and then i watch tv i watch media and it says oh but look at this person on tv they're frolicking on the beach in their hydroxy cut commercial all happy and smiling and everyone around me is congratulating people because they are you know looking good or they work out or whatever it is if i'm all if i have been conditioned to externally validate i'm going to turn to exercise and diet in hopes to fill that void in my life and i say it all the time this mindset piece is so important but we haven't been focusing on it at all it's as if people are the headless horsemen their heads out here and their bodies here and we haven't been connecting the two so for me and obviously i i have a population that comes to me for this reason but it's incredibly common yeah so can i add one thing to that yes go ahead to the amount of people that have contacted me from this mind pump uh, episode from the Facebook group saying, Rachel, I'm going through the exact same thing. Tell me what Christine is telling you. Can we do this together? Can we hold each other accountable? So many people are experiencing the same thing. Yeah. 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 
we had an influx of folks reach out to us. And I will tell you guys, a good majority of them are seeing very similar results because it, we, we provide the opportunity to take to keep space for them. Well, Christina, you mentioned these check-ins, these emotional check-ins. It really sounds like, because I don't think a lot of people realize that that's a skill that if you don't develop, you don't have. And so like any skill that you develop, you have to consciously practice it first because someone listening might be like, oh my God, what a pain in the butt. Four or five times a day, I got to sit down, think about how I feel. And yeah, you do until it becomes automatic. But until it be, in order for it to become automatic, you have to consciously practice it just like anything else. The other thing I want to add is you have a background in therapy as well. So you don't just do fitness and nutrition. So for coaches listening right now, uh, Christina's she's educated in this. Now, what I used to do as a trainer, I did not have a background like you did, Christina. I would work with my clients alongside a therapist and we would work together. And I think, and I wanted to say that because I don't want coaches to listen to you and be like, oh, that's what I'm gonna do with my clients. Yeah. This is all, this is a specific skill that you have that you bring to the table. Um, now, Rachel, I want to ask you, you had yeah. mentioned how your relationship to exercise was affecting your relationship with your kids, how you were feeling. Has any of that changed? Has it changed for the better? What's that like now? So what's interesting is that when she and I first started, she was asking me, you know, what's your motivation? What's your why? And so my why was yes, to have control of my life. But I specifically said the words, I want to be able to go on vacation with my kids and not feel this pressure to work out every single day. And mm. I think I said it to you guys you too on our mm. first episode. We started working together in June. Um, my brother at the time, single guy, started dating a girl. To literally three months to the day, he got married. His wedding was in Israel. We had a family vacation. We're, I'm one of, you know, we're like 30. Um, and we had a two-week vacation in Israel where all the family was together and I was, I remember leading up to it and I was getting nervous. I'm like, Christina, I'm going to Israel. I'm not going to be able to, you know, work out every day. And, and, and she worked with me. She said, you're going to be feeling this. If you feel this, here are breathing exercises. Here's mindful. I still have not done yin yoga yet. I don't know if I ever will, <laughs> but she, she, she told me what was going to happen. She prepared me for it. Um, and I went to Israel. And I did not work out once and it was incredible. Wow. And I was literally able to enjoy my family, give my kids an experience that they will never forget. Um, and I can't, I can't believe I did it. I really can't believe great, I did it. Nice. Great, great job. Now, now here's the salesman in me. Okay. I'm going to sell this to people watching right now because here's the fear with someone watching who was in the same boat that you were. They're going to hear this and be like, oh my God, if I stop all this working out, I'm going to gain all this body fat. I'm going to look terrible. Uh, we're looking at you right now. You look amazing. You look very healthy. Any Thank phys you. Any physical changes? I mean, you, you look healthier to me, but any physical changes? Like what's what's happened since you've broken the chains yeah. of this addiction? Um, honestly, my body got a lot better. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, I'm resting a lot more. I'm seeing so much more definition in my muscles than I've ever seen the comments that I'm getting from people of like, what have you been doing? I'm like, honestly, working out a lot less, uh, but my energy, right. I've got so much more energy now. Um, also just the fact of like removing myself from the gym for that hour or two hours and giving it, you know, to my children or to, you know, anything other than that psychologically, you know, it, it, it gives me so much like fuel and self-worth and like meaning and purpose. And I think that ties into all of this too. Like yep. it's, it's mm -hmm. really, I feel fulfilled. That's, that's the only word I can really use right Excellent. now. Excellent. Excellent. Well, this is Beautiful. amazing to hear. I knew this would happen. I'm so glad <laughs> we sent you up with the best. Yes. Christina, thank you so much, uh, for, for, for doing this. I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad other people got to hear this, especially that last part, because that's the biggest roadblock is people are afraid if they change, oh, that means I'm going to sacrifice, you know, whatever gains I've made. You will look better if you do it right. Yeah. Guys, I, I just, I want to say a huge thank you to you guys. I really, really do. And this is not something that 
has just affected me. It's affected my kids. It's affected my friends. It's affected my relationships. I mean, you know, you guys did something to help me out, but you, you've got no idea how this affected so many other people besides me. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you so much. Great job. Bye. We'll see you guys. Bye. See ya. You know, one thing I want to comment on for coaches and trainers listening right now, and she kind of said it quickly and you might not even have noticed what a big deal this is, but if you're a trainer or coach, one of the most effective things you could do to build trust uh, and adherence and consistency with your client is to tell them what they're going to feel mm. before it happens. Two, two reasons. One, when it happens, they're going to look at you like, oh my God, you know what you're talking what are you, about. a wizard? Yeah. Number two, they're prepared. Because one of the most challenging things for somebody is when they go into a new challenge and they're not prepared. So they automatically, typically will default into their impulsive behaviors. But what Christina did, she set her up. She said, look, you're going to go on this trip. You're not going to work out. You, you're, this is what's going to happen. You're going to feel like this. And when that happens, I want you to do this. There's these tools. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so really it only solidified their bond. It built more trust in her coach, which is everything. Um, and she set her up for success. And I think that we really need to, coaches and trainers, this is something that you need to do with your clients. It will make you so much more effective. Oh, th this is yeah. so, um, this isn't just important for somebody who has, you know, some sort of disordered eating or bad relationship. This is every client. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Every yeah. client comes in with expectations of what they think. And most of them are wildly skewed. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be successful at what you do, learning to forecast that for them from the very beginning yes. will set you up. I mean, we cover this in our course that, we're get, that we've been doing, and this is something that I can't stress enough on for someone who's trying to build their business, how important it is that you, you set the expectations correctly from the gates. You'll see a huge difference, not only in their adherence to it, but the success in your business too. Totally. By the way, where do they find Christina? It's Mind Over Matter. Is that the name of her business? I think that was the name of her uh, yes. coaching business. Something Let's, like that. I'll, right. I'll look it up. Make sure we have that up when, she, when she's talking for people who want to contact her or find someone like her. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. If you have any fitness goals, you want some free help, go check those out. Also, you can find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump to Stefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 